Okay, so I finished up cleaning up after uh, the fettling work, and the fettled pots from yesterday are now up here where the heat from the kills can get at them. And you can hear the two kills uh, checkering off in the distance. So I'm going to show you drawing a kill out. And this particular kill is, uh, I call it number B because it's the one in the middle. We go one or A, B, C. So C and A are checkering right now. And I think this is going to be enough of a view to be able to see what's in there. Now we're only at 239, so I think I'm, usually I wear this heavier thing if it's, you know, in the three or four hundreds, and if it's above 500, I'll wear heavier, heavier gloves. But as you get cooler, a more, you know, sort of a safer, a glove that you can feel through a little bit more ends up uh, being really useful. And I think at 239, this is going to be fine. Now I have one pot in here that uh, <laughs> when I was moving it from the checker, the, the bottom fell off of it. <laughs> now most people say, well, you throw that away. So I took it over and I, I took some uh, slurry and paste clay, you know, wet clay, and I just spun the thing back together again, and it it may have worked and it may not. So there, to get a good yield, you end up having. So I got these bigger pots that are, you know, maybe a hundred bucks each. The uh, ones, actually, those are twenty-four, so they're one hundred and fifty each. Uh, and the ones inside are 60 bucks. So the more you get in, the better the yield, you know? So here's one, what I call a Peabody. The Peabody pot was made originally in Boston, well, in Peabody, and sort of between the 1870s and the 1930s, it was kind of the estate flower pot uh, for New England. And you find them all over the place. But one of the more exciting spots is there are pictures of it for the day Isabella Stewart Gardner opened her museum. So I'm making for my friend in Newport this slightly more, uh, I think I'm gonna bring this closer just for a minute. So what I want to show you in here is there's three pots sitting inside each other. And you see how the bottom one I got, those are what we call the feet that we put under the pots, but they're a really good shape for stabilizing the pots as they're stacked inside each other. So that middle bowl to keep it from rocking around, I have that. So the kill furniture inside this, I have uh, supports uh, going up from a, a round disc. I'll show you that as I take it apart. So I'll put this back up here. Sorry for bouncing you guys. And the first pot comes out. Now if this was really hot, I would put it on its side so that it cooled more evenly. I don't have to worry one little bit about that one because it's but so I would put it on the floor. It's a concrete floor, so I put it so that it could uh, cool evenly if it was above 500 degrees. Now there's, as I say, there's a disc on the inside here sitting on top of a kill support, which is sitting on top of a disc in the pot below. So I can stack these up in such a way that they're not making pressure from each other. Now that's the pot that has the big 
crack in it, and I don't know if I caught it or not. I may be pulling this out and having the bottom fall off. Either way, I can take... <laughs> This sounds so awful to say, but I can take an epoxy and glue it back together again. Well, this is a $150 pot. If I fix it like that, I can still sell for 80 bucks. And there are a lot of people that want those. Uh, so I have a whole batch of these Peabody's. Like I say, these are $90 each. Well, actually, I only have two. The two with the three holes, those are the size nine pot. And the number sixes, those are peels, and those are $45 each. So we got 450 for three of these, 450, then 540, 540, 600, 620, and another two, uh, 700. It's about an $800 yield. I'm making a guess there, but you know, it's, uh, and, that's pretty great. So even if this bowl is not perfect, I can still repair it enough. But I'm, I'm going to be gentle with it, taking it out. And hear what those feet look like. So that when you put them in, they, they're a really nice wedge. And I'm going to let the third one just fall. And that looks really good. So I'm, I am going to uh, add some tile grout to that, but I think this pot's in pretty good shape, which is a real surprise for, you know, when you... <laughs> that had its bottom completely broken off. So see, right, right here is where I rejoined it and I'll, I'll do a, a batch of uh, I don't know maybe I'll use PC 11 which is a really nice epoxy or just towel grout I'm not quite sure which I'll end up using okay so here we go there's the last kill shelf and that's the one foot that I let drop because I wanted to just Uh, be as gentle as I could be in case that was not connected well. And uh, there we go. Well, the rest of that's coming out now. So this kill is nice and warm. These two kills are both at 200. So I could just make my choice of uh, which ones I want to checker. I'm sorry. Uh, things have been checkering. Which, ones, which one I want to set. So you set a kill, you fire a kill, and you draw a kill. Those are the the terms for for uh, setting up for firing. Okay, you guys. So th that's pretty nice down there. This is a pot that I do sort of uh, inspired by the one that Jim Keeling has done uh, as a uh, reverence to. There's a 18th century. A pot that was at Powis Castle, and of course the original is in red. And it, the one that he does, he adds sprigging of, uh, you know, um, basket work all the way around it. And I just do a sgraffito to remind people that that it, you know it had basket work on it. But these have been very very successful here, and they're uh, this one, like I say, is going to cottage and garden. Uh, in Newport and uh, I'm going to turn this off and the last thing I'll do today is show you how I set a kill. Okay you guys. Okay hello again. So it's been about four hours since uh, I've been working on my bills and these kill two kills have been checkering and by that I mean uh, I've set the ramp so it'll go up to 200 degrees and stay there. So 212 degrees water boils. And this just means that we've forced the last bit of water out of these slightly larger pots. These are only number nine or nine pound pots. But, and you can see I got the gloves back on. I'm gonna turn this around so I can see what the camera's doing. 
Okay. So, well, there's no reason to keep this one going. But I have to... So, basically, as quickly as I can, while these pots have gotten nice and dry, it's nice to keep the heat in them. So the faster I stack this kill, the happier it's going to be for going up. Uh, I fire... A lot of people talk about 06. It's, 06 is way too low for flower pots. You want them to not delaminate in the ice. So we go up a little bit hotter. I used to go to 03. And because some of the flower pots are in white clay, I go to 02. So what's that, 2005 degrees, something like that. So as I'm looking at these, pulling them out, I'm just making a reference in my head about which are breathe slightly wider and which are a little bit tighter. Because as I go, these are all gonna be stacked inside each other. So let's see if I put it here, let's see. See, I, I'm trying to look at the the lens of this thing so I know what's uh, what's going on. Well, not, sorry, no, that doesn't quite work. Well, anyway, so we're we're going to be stacking them. <laughs> oh, let's see if I go like this, maybe. There we go. Okay, so now how can I set this so that you guys can see what I'm doing? I wonder what that's like. That's pretty cool. All right. And I'm going to turn around the other way so I can see it when I'm working over here. Okay, so with the pyrometer or whatever they call this thing the you know the, the thing that watches the heat you want to be you want to work the pots to so that they're to either side of that now the reason we're being so careful about um putting them in hot is there's a lot more mass being put in the kill than what you might think of in a regular firing. So when we worry about the shape of these pots, that there's sort of a Dorian line in them, you want the pot to sit down one inside the other right near as close to the bottom as possible. And that's the thing that makes a tower of them strong. So you can't, you don't want the wall of the pot to be sitting into the one below it. That one's just a little too tight. How's that showing everything? That didn't show going over here, so let's just move this like that. Sorry. You guys, how's that? I think that's showing it. So if something's looking skinny, you always put those towards the top. If it's fatter, it goes to the bottom. Oh, that's nice. So we got one, two, three, four, five in a stack. You, you see what I mean about being able to get a lot of yield out of the kiln? It does mean you have a long day. So 
after I stack this kill up, oh, that one's fatter. Let's see if that'll go. Um, I th no. There's a little bit of a warp and a twist in that body. I don't know if this is going to be better or not. Oh, that's a lot better. Except, see, here's the thing. If it doesn't, see the way that's rocking? You just don't want that. That's, if that does that, the pot, there's no question that the pot will split because it's not sitting evenly with the pressure of the one above pushing in. Now that pot's even wider, so I'm gonna... Let's see what that's like. Oh, that's pretty good. See how that... At the top, it kind of... It's not so important. But the further down it gets, the more... They want to set properly and it's inside each other because they're having more pressure being put on them. That feels good. Just got to get it in the right spot so it... There. Just a little bit more. either. Okay, let's switch them around. Well, that's not so bad. I don't know if you can even see that. We're getting pretty close to them being in. We're going to finish this kill up with my wife's number twos. I got one more. I think what I'm going to do is, this is actually pretty good. I guess what I'll do is I'll come out of here and put that like that. And I got to turn it around so I can see. Yeah, that's showing pretty good. Okay. So we got two more number nines to put in. One, okay, I don't like that. It's rocking around in a way I don't want it to do. It's pretty precarious. So the rest of the kill is going to be my wife's number twos and her half pounders. So that those are here again. I have to turn this around so I can see what you're seeing. Boy, am I no good at this. Is that showing it? I can't even see. Okay, let's pull this out. Okay, so my problem here, I got, that one's doing fine. This is doing fine. I don't, this one's a little tippy. It's a lot tippy and I don't like that. So what I'm gonna do is, is uh, settle it with a lot of number twos, which in other words, my wife's number twos number twos are gonna sort of hold that pile up see what I mean now that's happier and I do have this guy is he gonna fit in here I didn't want to put that one in while it was being so tippy, but now that I got that other thing sort of holding it in place, and the, they move around, so you know these could tip over a little bit in firing. 
Now in putting these in, I'm holding three of them and going down and starting the ne next tower of them. It's funny how in Britain there's these different uses for the same word. You can bung up a door and then there's also making a tower of these like this is called a bung. So I don't know if that's in different parts of the country or what. So this is going to be a good yield. Now the, the red pots are not sulfurous. So when I fire just red, I don't have to have a fan on. But these white pots, they're made out of uh, gold art clay. Gold art is a sulfurous body, which puts a terrible cloud of sulfuric acid in the air. So I have to, I have this pretty fancy uh, air, air system, you know, that sucks the bad, bad stuff out of the pottery, out of the, out of the air in the pottery. All right, what do we have left? Oh, I have to move it off of here because the last little ones are in side of here. This is the kill we fired yesterday and see down below there there's cute little I guess those are half a pound each so let's see oh, I'm sorry I know when I'm not looking at this it's doing all sorts of crazy stuff yeah that's not such a great shot but we can end up that way so again the other sort of cool trick is when you're holding a batch of them, if you hold them in such a way that you can put them in, so four, I can hold four without too much of a problem. Uh, and I'm just gonna put these inside the, the bungs I have going on number twos. I have one, two, three, four of those. And if I started from the ground going up, I could do a whole, oh, 18 or 20 of these. But I don't need to do that because we're just filling up. We're just filling. But all of this, the smaller stuff uh, adds to the yield. I'm just going to put some upside down. We're all set here. This is pretty good. So putting all this pressure going down to the bottom of this, what I'll leave you with is, so the interior of these kills, when you look on the interior, because I'm not using uh, shelving all the way going up, I'm just, I put down shelves on the floor to hold, because just imagine how much pressure is pushing down on that floor with these towers of pots coming up. I mean, you can see it. Each one of those is nine, well, they're nine pounds with water, so what does that mean? They're like seven pounds, something like that. Six or seven. I, it's, water is usually about 15%. But so, and you remember we had that tippy one, so I got this group going on over here. All right. Well, I, I think that's enough for now. Uh, I'm going to set the blower. So this comes on, this thing, and then you see here, I got this at a, in three hours, that fan's gonna turn on, and it's a serious fan if you look up. This was, I don't know, one of the big industrial 
factories had this and they got something fancier. And we just happen to have the people that do air systems here in Litchfield and I got to buy this second hand. So that serious uh, thing, make sure that the sulfurous air that's in here is taken care of. Okay, now turn it that way. We're good. All right, you guys, well, that's a non-throwing day in the pottery. What the other chores are to keep the place going. I'm just gonna hit stop so it knows where it is. I'm gonna hit cone fire, preheat zero, cone O2, yep. And then uh, it's slow because it's a big amount of mass in there. Uh, once I don't care if it, it soaks it, I just want it to get up to temperature. So it's zero on the soaking and it's ready to go. And that's it for today. So I'll, I'll let this fire to a, anywhere between 850, 900 to even almost 1100 before I'll close that up because I want, I, I've just found that there are forms of water that are inside uh, these kills that uh, it's just better to let, let as much um, of that last chemical water out. While I was saying that, I remembered I, I showed you the inside of the other kill to say that there were a shelf down at the bottom. The problem with that shelf when you're doing red wares is that the red clay has a little more silica in it. And so there is the possibility of the lower pots in the kill dunting if you cool it too quickly. So this firing, I will not open it up until it's below 300 degrees because uh, even if it's reading 300 degrees, it's a lot hotter in the mass of the, of the clay. So that's another piece of information for the potters watching this. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. Talk to you again.